can you take one spare day before a trip and turn it into a bucket list hike? Turns out if the place you need to be after is in Patagonia, yes, you can. My sister Sydney and I were landing in Santiago, Chile on Saturday and needed to be in Punta Arenas, Chile Monday morning. I realized that's only about a three hour bus ride away from the city of Puerto Natales, which is basically the staging area for hiking in the world renowned Torres del Paine National Park, and specifically the main trail to the base of the towers there. It's a huge place, but I guarantee if you just Google Patagonia right now, a good chunk of the pictures are going to be this specific viewpoint. It's always defined the area to me, and when I realized we might be able to get there, I kind of latched onto it a little bit but a lot of things had to work out with the travel and the weather. So we hopped a flight direct to the airport, in quotes, at Puerto Natales. It's a building at the end of the runway with like one spot for a plane. Uh, Sydney's Spanish is a lot better than mine, and we eventually successfully purchased bus tickets, both to and from the park, and then to Punta Arenas after. That bus station and the four or so companies that run it have their trade down to a science, but weirdly even the people at the tourism info desk didn't speak English. Kind of a weird setup. The buses from each of the companies leave around 7 a.m. every day and take a couple of hours to get to the park on what were maybe half gravel roads that filled the bus with dust. Uh, for the main hike, you get off at the Laguna Amarga Park gate where they check your ticket to get in. Um, as of January 2023, a lot of website guides on this topic are out of date. You buy your ticket completely online and show a QR code for this. Do it the day before. The forms are long. The biggest bottleneck we hit the whole day is this next part. To get to the actual welcome center to start the hike, you need to take a shuttle bus within the park, it cost some cash, and there was literally only one physical bus, and it's a 10 minute one way trip. And about six coach buses all let off people at the same time at the park entrance. So you see the problem? Uh, rush to get in that line as soon as possible. The stupidity is strong with that system. There are some very small parts of the video that I include audio in if we say something interesting. How about, thank God, we're free of the buses. <laughs> Weather is perfection so far, at least. We'll see if it stays that way, but just, this is the bottom. You can see where we're going way up there. I just want to tell myself for posterity how excited I am that I found a stick. I basically manifested it. We were talking about it and then looked down at the ground and it was just there, fully formed. Someone else had already used it before. But I'm very excited. Yeah, it's like made my day. For a difficult to get to hiking spot, I'd call it crowded, but in the grand scheme of things, that still doesn't mean many people. Uh, maybe one or 200 out there somewhere on the trails. It was a weekend during peak season. Um, we'd regularly see people, but were only occasionally in a backup, so to speak, mostly on the steep parts at the top. It was fun to eventually start recognizing people. We had the intense trail running couple, the Israeli group, the crazy guy with no water, the older woman who was also named Sydney, uh, a bunch of others. Yeah, they've got kegs. It's beer. Keg horses. I don't know what the heck happened here. Was this... Did humans do this? Or did Mother Nature do this? I think Mother Nature had to do this. Some kind of flash flood or something? Yeah. This is terrifying. It's carnage. The terrain covers everything from flat grassland to gravel trails to forest to almost rock scrambling. Uh, the difficulty here is not really steepness or technical complexity though. It's primarily just the length and sustained moderate effort. Uh, it's almost 14 miles and my watch clocked me at 4,100 feet elevation gain. About nine hours total time and a little under seven of that is moving uh, since we paused for at least an hour at the top for lunch and pictures. The top of the hike is basically a big expanse of boulders on the shore of the lake below the towers. Uh, and the towers are big. 
way bigger than I was expecting based on pictures. I think because it's never clear how far away they really are. Um, for some perspective, I measured it in Google Maps and the lake that you see is about a mile long. Uh, it also shows the elevation difference between the viewpoint and the peak is over 4,000 feet. That's the entire hike's elevation gain again, crazy. And I probably don't need to mention how lucky we were with the weather. It was really just perfect temperature, a little wind. I got pretty sunburned actually, as I wasn't expecting it to be so nice. Small price to pay. We ate our packed lunch, took a bunch of pictures, and headed back down. This was way faster, but definitely not easy. And I have to say, if you want to make your bus back, you are really going to need to watch the time, especially with the terrible shuttle system. We pretend that's time, need them passes by when we're on the hall and drive. I know it won't be long before done, gotta be patient for a while. Someday we look up stars in the same sky. When I'm on the other side. I will note there is a midway stop with an actual building selling food and drink. It also has bathrooms and you can pay to use those uh, and like showers and stuff for the campers who rent space in the elevated tents on the, on the slope outside. These actually looked pretty sweet. Uh, my one beef with this whole place though is that they don't really sell water. The midway has like a spigot coming from the river and they point to that if you ask. Uh, and even the welcome center at the base only sold tiny carbonated waters in glass bottles. Ridiculous. People need water. Uh, more fuel for my theory that everyone outside the U.S. is chronically dehydrated. Okay. For the record, two and a half liters worth of water was not sufficient to complete this whole hike. We now have about $17 worth of Gatorade from the hut that we go past on here, but I think it was worth it. It's the best Gatorade I've ever had. Frutos Tropicalis, way better than red. Is this a horse invasion? Are these actual cowboys wrangling a herd of horses? Um, do we know where the horses are going? <laughs> uh, <horses. laughs> Well, we are at a bush. <laughs> I can't do anything about it. Get away from me. Horse. Giant, scary horses. Hello. Okay. I'm relinquishing the stick to the next person. Look, you can see the peak. Ta da. Yeah, all the way off in the distance. Let's see him. It's 13.6 miles ago. We're lucky everything worked out here, as this was really pushing it in terms of what's possible to do in a day. Uh, but executing on a plan like that and checking off something so cool on my travel list at the same time makes it even more satisfying. If you'd like to see more of this kind of thing or like listening to me complain about stuff, please do subscribe. It almost makes the hours of editing worth it. <laughs>